Okay, thanks, Caroline. This is now my reply to your response. Um, I think actually we're on the same page with this. And in a sense, you might be saying that um, our position or our proposition is um, utopian and idealistic. And I'd probably agree. I'd just call it uh, an aspiration uh, or a set of goals um, and framed and phrased in languages that uh, institutions and managers would understand and agree with and which um, technologists and their technologies can uh, work with. Yeah, so, I mean, we've chosen a language that uh, policymakers and educational managers can get on board with, and we're quite happy to admit that more work needs to be done. Um, I suppose, for example, we need greater specificity. You know, we need the platforms and the content to be more specifically targeted at who the refugees are, what they need, how they learn, where they are, whatever it is that, that makes it more appropriate for them. And we need something around the MOOCs that is greater facilitation. So we need um, more people, more training. And we need better business models. And we need to explain to institutions how this is a good thing for them, not only as educators and universities, but as businesses and corporations. Um, and I think there is an argument to be made about helping um, refugees get into the economy and for governments and regions to see that as a win-win situation that it's good for the refugees it's good for the economy it's good for the regions and the countries and so that's that's why we're talking the way we're talking and using the way we're using words that we're using um, and then that argues for a, a policy that underpins those priorities and those resources and makes this all happen but I mean f fundamentally we think that the obstacles to using MOOCs to facilitate higher education for refugees and improved employment for refugees is, is undeniable and uh, we've got a good case here and I hope everyone will support it.